In the last video we made this hairstyle completely for games. But the thing I forgot to show was how to actually export it for game engines. So in this video we're gonna go over how to actually turn hair that's been made using path curves in Blender to a fully game ready hair. I have no idea what this is. And finally exporting it at the end. It doesn't matter if it's hair card based like this one or stylus hair. We will turn it into game ready hair. And also I'm going to be adding this to my full 3 hour tutorial I've made for this hairstyle. Where you can download in the link in the description. But first let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online platform for artists. Offering thousands of classes to help you improve your skills. I always look for ways to improve my 3D modeling skills. To create better characters here on the channel. I came across this amazing class on Skillshare made by Daniel da Costa. This class dives deep into the anatomy modeling for Blender, helping you create realistic human models or this stylized character class with over 40 hours of clear step-by-step -step instruction to make a really professional stylized character from the scratch. A lot more amazing classes you might want to join. And it's not only for character design. Skillshare offers classes on many different categories like photography, graphic design, music, marketing and basically anything. If you're passionate about something, there's a class for you. What I love about the Skillshare is that it offers bite-sized lessons so you can learn at your own pace and fit it into your schedule. Skillshare isn't just about learning, it's about practicing your creativity. Think of creativity like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. This platform encourages you to take what you learn and put it into action, whether it's through personal projects or by engaging with their big community. The first 500 people to use my link in description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Firstly go ahead and select all of the hair curves. In the object data properties decrease the resolution preview to a low number. As you can see only one of the hair cards changes. A cool trick we can use here is to hold alt and now if we drag it all of the other hair cards follow this number. It should be as low as possible but don't get it too low because at some point it will lose its shape and we don't want that. Usually 4 to 6 is good enough. Now Navigate to your target hair curve, which is this one, and select it. If you're doing a stylized hair, it's probably look like this. If it is, make sure to go to edit mode, select the bottom part of the vertices and press X then segments to remove the bottom side. After that, decrease the resolution of this one to a really low number, like 1. Or if it's a stylized hair, it should be a bit higher, so 2 or max 3 would be enough. Now select all of the hair planes, right click and convert it into mesh. While all of them are selected, press Ctrl J to join them all together. Ok, now we have this hair merged up together as one object. Let's go to object data properties and in the UE maps, double click on this one so we can rename it. Name it to something like main. Then click on this to create a new UV map. Name this one unwrap because we're gonna unwrap it. Go to edit mode. Then press A to select all. Press U to bring up the UV mapping menu. Then click on unwrap to unwrap the UVs of the hair. Now if we go to UV editing tab, you can see we have all the hair cards laid down nicely with one click. If you want to do something to it or change or modify the UV map, it is that time. Cause you're not gonna get a chance to change it after this stage. Now let's go to render option. If you're on EV, change the render engine to cycles cause baking doesn't work on other engines. Then scroll down and find bake section. There are some things that we should take care of first in order to get a clean bake. First in the shading section, shift A and add an image texture. Click on new, then click on the resolution. Insert a multiply at the end and type 8 so we get an 8K image. We're gonna use this one for diffuse slash base color. So let's name it hair diffuse and click on new image. While it's selected, shift A to duplicate and place it in the bottom. Click on this icon to duplicate the texture. Now we wanna use this image for the normal map. So let's name it hair normals. Shift D again to duplicate this one too. And again, click on this icon to duplicate the texture once more. This one is for alpha, so we're naming it hair alpha. If you have more maps like roughness or reflections, make sure to add those as well. Now if you have only one hair material, it's easy. Just select the diffuse map and go to bake section. Use any bake type you want like diffuse to bake your hair. But since we have multiple hair materials, there's one more step to go before baking. In order to bake multiple materials into one, we need to do something. 
and that is selecting all of the image textures we made, press Ctrl C to copy all of the textures, then in the material settings, switch to other hair materials, move the mouse to the shader settings, and press Ctrl V to paste those maps here. Switch to the next material, move the mouse to the shader settings, and paste it here again. We got a lot of materials here, so we have to do that to all of those materials as well. Now we can bake the diffuse map from the bake section, but I find using emit as the bake type gives us better results with less errors. So we're gonna use emit. In the principal shader, open up the emission section and increase the strength to 1. This makes sure our texture is fully lit. After that, connect whatever that was connected to the base color to the emission color so we can bake through the emission. Switch to the next material, increase the emission strength to 1 again, connect the base color to the emission, then start doing that to all of the other materials. Now if we bake it like this, Blender doesn't even know what's the target image. So what we need to do is to select the hair diffuse map by clicking on it. It should be selected in all of the materials, so let's do that. Now we can finally move on to the bake section. Change the bake type to emit if it isn't already. Then before clicking on bake, go to object data properties and in the UV maps, make sure the main UV map is active and also be sure that unwrapped is selected. If it's blue, that means it's selected. Then in the shading tab, make sure the hair diffuse is selected. Also check that the base color is connected to the emission and the strength is on 1. These are really important, so be sure to check all of them. We're finally ready to click on bake. Click on it and you see the bake process appears on top. It might take a few minutes based on your system, so wait a few minutes. When it's finished, we can go to UV editing tab and select the hair diffuse from here. And now you can see all of the hair cards are here. Before we forget, let's go to image, click on save as and save the image somewhere so we don't lose it. Now moving on to the second image texture, which is hair normal maps. We gotta do the exact same process as the last one. Connect the normal map to the emission, but make sure you don't accidentally connect the normal map shader to the emission. Try to avoid seeing these nodes, cause we only need the normal map image texture. Okay, now that we connected the normals to the emission, we gotta select the image textures we made for the normal map. And you already know, we gotta have this one selected in all of the other materials, in order to bake all of the maps into this one. Then click on bake. After a few minutes, it's done baking. And if we go to the UV editing tab and switch to normals, it should look something like this. Go to image and save it somewhere. It is time to bake our third map, which is the alpha map. To do that, just grab the alpha and connect it to the emission. There's not much to say here, just do it for all of the hair materials. Once you've done that, just select the last image texture we made on every material like before. After you made sure everything is in their place, go ahead and in the bake settings, click on bake. And you know what to do after that. You may wonder how mine bakes the texture so fast. It's because it doesn't. I just cut the video. You're gonna go through the suffering yourself. So it's not really fair to put you through mine too. Don't forget to save it. Cause Blender temporarily keeps it on the cache. And it will be gone if you don't save it. Only one thing left, and that is bringing all of these together. I recommend getting another save from your file, so if you mess this up, you have another chance to bake it again. After that, in the material settings, click on this minus icon to remove all of the materials from the mesh, because now we only need one. We can keep the one named hair, for example. It doesn't really matter which one. Disconnect the old maps from the principal BSDF and bring them to the front of our new baked images. Connect the hair diffuse to base color. Shift A and add a normal map node then connect the hair normals to the normal map through this node. And you already know what to do with the hair alpha. Now if you go to the rendered mode, you're gonna be shocked as you see it looks like dog shit. But don't panic yet, cause it's normal. Firstly, decrease the strength so it's not white. It still looks like this, cause if you go to the object data properties, the old UV map that looks like a mess is still active. That's why it looks like this. Our new UV map is this one. 
So when you remove the old one, it should get fixed. It's already game ready and you can export it, but it's also easier to work with it in Blender. But to fix it, we need to decrease the intensity of the normal map. Also, we can add a color ramp between the hair alpha to thicken up the hair or make it thinner. If you want to use it in Blender, change the color space of the normal maps to non-color. You can add a hue and saturation node to simply change the color of the hair or decrease the saturation and value to make it brunette. Now that it has a decent geometry, a ready UV map, big textures, it's fully ready to be used in other softwares and game engines. You can go to file, export and export it as OBJ or FBX or any other format. And that is it. Be sure to use my link in the description to get a free one month trial of Skillshare. And also check out my Gumroad to download the tutorials and other stuff. See you on the next one. Peace.